Dr. Dana Tassone here uh, for HFT 6296, talking about uh, lecture notes from Chapter 9. Uh, this chapter is about uh, evaluation and control. And there's an interesting thing happening here. Now we are coming about uh, full circle. Uh, so what we're doing in, in this section, in this chapter, is we're revisiting um, all of those things we talked about in the beginning. And, uh, and, and that's what a strategic process is. It's very cyclical. Um, you know, it, it, it starts, it develops, it uh, implements, it, uh, and then ultimately you evaluate and you control um, the situation and uh, you start again at the top. It's, an ever, it's a living process. And um, in, in the strategic audit, evaluation and control are the uh, last segments that you'll be uh, writing about. Now, control, I, I know I told you this, but control is not a bad thing. Uh, we think of control, sometimes when we hear the word control, uh, we think of control freaks, or uh, we think of those bad guys in the accounting office called controllers. Um, the control really serves a, a good purpose in organizations. The, uh, the evaluation and control segments have to do with identifying here, and we're going, oh, we're going back to the beginning. You have objectives, you have strategies, you have um, policies, you have standards, you have procedures, and all, um, all evaluation and control has to do with is, is comparing actual performance in an organization um, to standards for performance. And what sets the standards? The standards are set by the mission, which drives the objectives, which ultimately sets the standards for performance in the organization. And when you have actual performance and standards, contrary to most of the performance management systems you've seen, there really are only three things that can happen. Um, an individual or a group or an SBU can meet the standards, they may exceed the standards, or they may fail to meet the standards. Those are the only three things that can happen. I, I always enjoy getting uh, watching these uh, five-point scales of uh, excellent uh, down to uh, horrible, I guess, in these uh, performance appraisal systems, which are part of an overall performance management system. I'm sure you were taught that in the human resource management course. And um, and also in organizations, if, if evidence of a non-strategic or pseudo-strategic organization is in the fact that they tolerate um, subjective performance appraisals. And, and that's why you've seen this happen. That's why an individual could be managing an area and uh, he or she, um, uh, the people that work in that area, he or she thinks um, they're all excellent, everybody's wonderful, and uh, then that manager moves on, gets promoted or leaves, New manager comes in and all of a sudden everybody is average, everybody is just okay. And you have to ask yourself, well how can that be? If, if it's the same people, they're doing the same thing, they have the same standards. And the answer is you have a person uh, placing his or her uh, subjective opinions on individuals as opposed to looking at the standards, looking objectively at the actual performance and watching to see if they meet the standards, the performance meets the standards, exceeds the standards, or does not meet. Those are the only three things that can possibly happen. The uh, author, well, in the original work, <coughs> the author gave us a flow chart, and I've recreated that flow chart uh, to, to reinforce those three outcomes that I just told you about. Um, and then I give you uh, information on measuring performance, which I just told you about, and uh, and, and you know that the that performance is, should be well. You know that the organizational scheme, the organizational um, management, um, should consist of a balance. Again, it's one of my favorite words. You keep hearing me say it: a balance between um, authority, which is the right to delegate to others, authority, and responsibility. Um, the, the responsibilities are the accountability for the activities of an individual or groups of individuals. Those should be in balance. Oftentimes, as you know, they're out of balance because in, 
in centralized decision-making organizations. They will heap tons of responsibility on SBUs and on individuals within them, but be very stingy when it comes to authority. And this is not a good thing. And the reason that these issues are evidence for you in your audits is because it will determine, and of course you won't see these things unless you're an insider, but these issues will determine whether there is balance in the stakeholder groups. Remember, in the very beginning we talked about the stakeholder groups. We simplified it to include four groups. It includes the shareholders and the employees and the community and the customers. And we identified that a strategic direction, a strategic plan exists for the purpose of the welfare of each of those groups within the stakeholder community. And if you witness overall performance that is out of balance, then that's usually an indicator that the organization places a preference on shareholder returns at the expense of the other three groups, something that we commonly see in organizations and is not a preferable strategy for us or for them because it provides, as we discussed before, shareholders are interested in short-term returns. And when you provide short-term returns in terms of profitability and such, you sacrifice those initiatives that create long-term sustainability. And as a result, the firm ultimately will not be successful. And so if you see that an organization has the balance of long-term objectives and short-term tactics, or short-term objectives and strategies and tactics, then what you're looking at is a balanced organization. And that's a healthy organization. And of course, the culmination of your strategic audit will be the ultimate evaluation. What's evaluation? You're comparing the what is to what should be to the actual performance of the organization to the standards for performance. And based on that comparison, you'll determine whether it's healthy, very healthy, healthy, or not so healthy. And then ultimately what you'll do is you'll provide recommendations. Remember, you're writing this from the viewpoint of a consultative manager. You're either an internal or external consultant to the organization that you've chosen. And you've collected data and you've analyzed that data. And now when you get to this phase toward the end, it's time to share your evaluative comments along with recommendations for the enhancement of performance. Pretty simple process. So notice how we started. We started with the strategic planning and we talked about the stakeholder groups and we talked about the process of organizations. And then we identified various corporations and various forms of large and small corporations. And we talked about the direction of those corporations and the people in those corporations. And now we come back to the very beginning with control and evaluation. And that really completes the whole audit process as it does the strategic planning and implementation process. It's a nice, simple, concise way to do business. Why do people complicate it? Well, because organizations are complicated and people have a tendency to become overwhelmed with complicated scenarios. But it really is not rocket science, is it? So that pretty much is a completion of what we've been talking about all this time, what you've been reflecting on, what you've been focusing on, what you've been doing. And we're probably out of time because I always run out of time. But we're out of time and we have one more chapter note to go. And that's Chapter 10. And I'll see you in that clip. Thank you.